In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can get a similar result to the real-time virtual textures out of Unreal Engine 5 inside of Blender. If you're like me, you've used Unreal Engine 5 before and love the capabilities of the real-time virtual textures to where you can blend 3G, 3D objects with your ground material. And I've been wondering if you can do that in Blender for years now. And recently, I came across a video created by James Combridge which I will place the link down to that video down below. And he shows a geometry node setup on how you can achieve this result. I'm not gonna show you exactly how to do that. He shows everything step by step in about a few minutes long. But I'm gonna cover a few main topics that he went over. So what you wanna do is on the object that you want to blend into the ground material, you wanna create a new geometry node setup. You can name it whatever you want. Um, I called mine ground material blend setup. So here's a setup down here. There's an object info which you need to place your ground object in that spot. Change it to relative. Plug it into geometry, proximity, and then that goes into a store named attribute. And what you want to do is you want to call this thing right here blend mask or something similar. Uh, just that way you remember it. You'll, you're going to need it later in the shader editor. Again, he talks about it in the video down below, so go watch that if you want a step-by-step -step process on this. So after you have this set up, it's going to be called something, give it a name, and then go to your shader editor on that object. And before you go to the, to the shader editor, make sure your ground material has a material. In my case, I have two materials mixed in uh, with a noise texture, so pretty simple setup, nothing too complex. But what you want to do is you want to group your ground material, whether it's one material or two materials like I have here, and you want to give it a name, which I gave it ground material. And what you want to do is go to the object and you want to bring in your ground material and you want to bring in an attribute node and call it blend mask. So whatever name you put in here in the store named attribute node up here, so in my case I put blend mask, you want to put that here into the attribute node. And then you want to mix that in with your original shader of the object right here into a mix shader. And that's it. I grouped this together to call it blend ground. And the reason why I grouped that together is because in this environment, I used it on, on five different objects. That's why I wanted to make this a little bit easier because all I have to do is hit shift A and type in blend ground. And all I have to do is plug that in between the principal BSDF and then the output. So that's why I group that together. Otherwise, you're gonna have something like this. So no difference. I just prefer to have it a little bit more organized. So you can hit Control G and then right click and exit group. And then now it's just set up like this. Okay, so in the bottom left hand corner, you can see my rendered view. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn off the mix blend so you can see what's really happening here. Okay, so in my case, this is not a super noticeable thing. Let me hide the sun. Okay, so here is the material of the rocks and then the material of my ground. Now, it's not going to be, in this case, a super obvious distinction, but if you look at it, you, really, you can tell that this is two different materials. So, whenever I plug this in, this is the result I get. And again, James covers it in his video, so go watch that down below so you have a full understanding of this. So, as you can see, it now has a really nice, gradual change back into the original rock material. And of course you can adjust the height and noise mask that you can do and you can keep adding noise mask to further break up the harsh line. But now you can see that it works pretty well. So what happens if I want to have this same setup on a different object? Okay, so now I have a different rock object. Now I will say whenever you're using this technique that it is very powerful, but I will highly recommend that you use objects and materials of the ground that are fairly close otherwise it's going to look very weird if you have like say a mud material and then a grass material like blending in like that it won't look very good so this is why i decided to use both desert like material and a desert like object rock that i have here uh, so that way the transition is not as harsh so here is the material for that object right here it's a quixel mega stand mega scans asset by the way so remember that group we made right here and I called it blend ground? Well, that's pretty easy to now grab. So go to the other material, hit shift A and type in blend ground. Or if you named it something different, then grab that too. And as soon as you plug it in, you can see it immediately works. 
Now, for some reason, the fall off is not what you're wanting on this particular object. What you can do is go to geometry nodes and you want to click this button right here. And whenever you do that, you'll have a new setup and you can call it ground material blend setup for whatever object this is. Now, I didn't want to do that for this object. I thought it worked pretty well, um, but that's how you would do it. And if for some reason you had a different ground material, you're able to go in and change the ground material as well right here. Now, you might be wondering, is this just for nature assets? Well, no, it's actually not because here I'm using it on this skull object, which I did a little blending here and I grabbed this ground material. So for this animal skull, it's not just for nature assets, by the way. You can use it for different things. But as you can see, this, uh, this uh, animal skull here, I did something a little different. So I took the original textures right here and I added that, but only to the bottom of the object, as you can see here. You can see it very well under the horns, especially. And how I did that was I took the geometry Use the normal, separate it out. I wanted to get the top. Then I use a color ramp. And what I did is basically, I left the default color ramp and I changed the first one right here to a value of 0.75 in my case. You can adjust this more or less. And all it did, whenever I mix it in, is that it took the ground material and blended it into the bottom part. Now on this one, I didn't use a geometry node setup. But this is a different way to use this same setup. And you might be wondering why did I not use that setup if it's already done? Well, if I did, if I use the setup, it would pretty much cover the whole entire thing. And I just thought this way would be a little bit cooler to kind of have like an ambient inclusion kind of mask for the dirt texture. Anyways, so I thought this was a pretty cool technique to mix in some materials. Again, go check out James's video down in the description. He goes over in-depth, step-by-step, how to set that up. Um, but I just thought using this little setup right here is a different way of doing it if you don't want to use geometry nodes, because geometry nodes can get a little heavy. And I did notice on my Megascans assets, um, though to be fair, they are very high poly, it did kind of take a minute to kind of load, and the render times kind of went up uh, drastically. So if you don't want to use that geometry node setup, there is another way. And the way I found to work really good, especially in uh, this case right here, whenever it's like a desert environment or something where your object can be dusty, you use a geometry, separate from the normal, and use a color ramp to adjust the intensity. So let me show you what that does. So the more I lower it down, the more intense the effect is. So as you can see here, now it's really dirty. And I didn't really want that for my scene, so that's why I chose a value of 0.75. If you found these tips useful, drop a like on the video. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. If you want to support me and support the channel, go check out my Patreon. Links are down below. Thanks for watching.